It was in 1979 when we had a frozen yogurt shop downtown Minneapolis on 7th and Hennepin, and we received a phone call from the fair. And we were selling frozen yogurt and knew that, you know, I knew that like the back of my hand. And I get this phone call saying it's the Minnesota State Fair. And um, they said, would you like to be at the fair? And I said, of course, you know, being a fair goer since I was a young child, like all of us in Minnesota. And they said, and I'm thinking, you know, well, they'll want this uh, frozen yogurt out at the fair. But they said to me, well, no, Martha, we want you to bring your cookies. And I said, okay, sure, that'd be great. And hung up the phone and basically screamed because we had been selling like cookies at the yogurt shop and using cookie crumbles to put over the frozen yogurt. But they wanted me to bring our cookies to the Minnesota State Fair. So it was really uh, pretty much of a shock because I really thought we'd be in there for frozen dough or frozen uh, yogurt. So therefore, we had about three and a half weeks to get everything together. And um, at the time, um, I had... uh, Well, we had about five partners to start out with, and then we ended up basically with three. And that was uh, Neil and his wife, Brenda O'Leary, and then my partner, um, Gary, and myself. So we ventured off on this and uh, put together in our backyard, we built a small stand, a nine by 11 stand, and rented all the equipment at the time because we weren't quite sure if this was going to go or not. And um, set that up uh, on the corner of one of those boulevard uh, stands and sort of pulled everything together in those three weeks to start um, the process. But again, our key element was trying to do the freshest uh, product and bake them on site and be able to show the fair goers the whole process of our making the cookies. So that was the very beginning. (laughs) You know what I love about that story, Martha, is that you get this phone call and it's so applicable, applicable, I think, to people's lives today. You get this phone call and they ask you to do something that you don't really fully know how to do. And <laughs> it's, it would be much easier to say, mm, turns out we don't really do that. So no thanks. Yeah. But you said, OK, thanks. We have three weeks. We can figure that out. You didn't That's know right. how, exactly how to do it. You didn't know even where you were going to do it out of. But you said, you know what, let's just figure it out. And that attitude is I mean, that's what got you started is the, well, let's try. Exactly. That's, you know, and you highlighting that, I didn't quite even realize that until you just brought that up. uh, Us just, okay, let's do it. And we can figure this out. So, so yeah, we put all of our uh, planning on speed drive or something, but we just uh, sort of knew the ideas and, and many, you know, factors really went into trying to figure out how to do this. I mean, we definitely wanted it fresh out of the ovens, but the other piece was like, what vessel or how would you present this? And um, we had heard from other people about, in fact, one of my friends brought home from New York City, a cone that he bought on the street. And it was a cone of cookies with the smaller cookies inside. And so that's where we got the idea of the cone. And we, we, I really think that was really good because if you would put it in the bag, people would not see that when you're walking down the street. And as we all know, Minnesota State Fair is a food fair. And you are constantly seeing what everyone's walking down the street going, oh, well, that looks really good. I got to find out what that is and eat that. So I think that really helped out in uh, spreading the word is having uh, the people see that as they're walking uh, down the street, other people, you know, where'd you get that? And the other thing we did too, when we first started out is we did a lot of sampling. 
because at the time, most people um, thought that like store-bought cookies were um, Oreos or Nabisco's or cookies like that. And then in the bakeries were rather large cookies. So when they first saw those small cookies, you know, they didn't quite understand what that was. But with that, then when people went by, we would, you know, do heavy sampling. Hey, would you like to try one? And so many people took that cookie and they ate it and started walking away and then did the loop and turned right back to get a cone of cookies. So I think those um, things really helped us with the marketing right there at the fair. And for people that haven't had the opportunity to have them, when she's talking about a cone, I think you might naturally go to like a cone that you put ice cream in. She's talking about like a white paper cone that you get a slushy in. And that's what you can get the cookies in. So you get the cookies either in the cone, this white cone, or a bucket that is branded. But at the beginning, it, it was the cone. And you hit on some you know really key things. You first have to introduce this product to people. And then you have to put it in something that other people are interested to get it as well, because it does become the staple. Hey, everyone else has these cookies. Darn it. I better go get some too. It's like, <laughs> you know, people that are in the garage sailing kind of thing you have, or thrift shops, there's, until there's a long line, nobody comes in, even though the product is exactly the same, but it, it becomes this really exciting. I got to be part of that. I, I There's this trend and I need to be involved. So it, I just wanted to give that picture of people are like, wait, what? What kind of cone? Um, That's right. Martha, that first year, do you remember, did you make or lose money? Um, we made money. That's great. We were, you know, I'm not telling you very much, but we did make money. And all of us were working regular jobs. So what we did with that money and is just put it right back into buying equipment and things for the next year. And we did that for a number of years because we ended up having to uh, keep up with the way the product was going. Um, we had to get these um, rack ovens, which is a huge oven that can bake about 2000 cookies in um, 12 minutes. And one of those, you know, we, we our first one actually was a half a rack oven. So we could get uh, about a thousand cookies in 12 minutes and we got that once we we uh, purchased a building when buildings would come up at the fair we were able to get some of those spots so we had instead of being in a temporary spot we actually had a roof over our head which was wonderful so we get this rack oven for the first time and we're like okay this is like perfect we'll just have you know an easy chair here and an easy chair there. We'll put in those cookies and press the button. And there we go. We'll have cookies for a long time. Well, as, as the first year went by, we realized we're going to have to get more of these ovens because it just seemed every year we were making our cookies more available and expanding our um, manufacturing point so that we could make more cookies, we we're able to sell more cookies. So the, the, you know, at this point, at the very end of the game now, um, we have so many, probably about seven or eight of those, probably seven in each stand. We do have three stands now, and they uh, have all these rack ovens so that we're able to win, all, like on the weekends when it's like crazy busy, we are able to produce about uh, 44,000 cookies in 12 minutes. So when we're doing those, you know, when we have those long lines, you know, we're really trying to, you know, we have a lot of cookies and we're really trying to keep up with the crowd, but they're very, very patient. I have to say they're, they're really, and they're they're by the time they get to the front, the smiles on their faces are huge. So it's really <laughs> a fun thing. And the beautiful thing about standing there and waiting is that you get to smell the cookies because they're being <laughs> baked right there. So, you know, you think about all the smells that are at a fair and you can get yourself in that line and suddenly the animals, the people, the, you know, fried food stuff that all like mingles together goes away and all you smell are cookies, which is a kind of a strange thing to be smelling in outside August. Yes, but that's it's true. Part of the, it's part of the thing. 
Yeah, that, I have very good point. Very good point. Yes, it is, you know. So what, I mean, it's the, it was the seventies when this all started and right. we know right now that women running companies, leading companies, being the face of a company isn't, isn't normal. Isn't the, yeah, there's That's more right. and more women, but in the seventies, it was pretty much unheard of. What was that like for you? Well, it was many times uh, people were surprised, you know, um, when I was the person they were talking to because they weren't used to uh, talking to me. And but I had a lot of great people that helped me along the way um, and a lot of great men, too. You know, of course, um, some of the people that we got ingredients from a salesperson, uh, this is an old name that was from l &L Distribution. Er Earl was a salesperson who helped me come up with some of our best ingredients for all of our dry goods and so on and so forth, because that's what he was selling. So, and he was in the bakery business too, you know, selling ingredients to bakeries. So, you know, there's some of those people along the way that really, really helped me out. And it was, it was great. You know, I was looking for help whatever way we could. The other how, people how? that, oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was going to say the other people I'm thinking about is when we were starting to do this recipe, because what I did is basically take our mom's recipes and looked at it from, you know, all my partners and looked at these recipes. And, and of course, they were for 24 cookies. Well, we were looking to sell more than that per batch. So um, I talked to my father, who was connected with the St. Paul Public Schools, and he sent me down to the Voltec at the time. Now it's called St. Paul College. And um, he, the, the person in charge of the uh, um, baking, teaching baking and the chef, was able to help me multiply out that uh, recipe because, you know, we we're trying to probably multiply it by a thousand, but because of friction and science and all that, that was uh, something that I really needed to be guided with. So I was trying to go to the professionals and just talking to people that were in the um, industry so that I could pick up any, anything that we could get from them, any pointers and tips. How long did you keep your day job? Oh, I, I taught for 25 years because it was teaching. I taught art. And so um, when I first started, though, I was still teaching. Why? Well, I, I, like I said, the first 25 years I was still teaching. But um, in the first years, you know, and again, youth was part of the factor here because we would work up you know, to, to Labor Day, and then the next day school would start. And I'd literally go to school, and I could never do something like that these days. And, of course, we were smaller, you know, not as big. But still, it was, uh, like I say, youth. That's, that's the only reason I got through those years. But, um, yeah, so I continued to teach. And then what happened is my... Um, administration or principals that were working with me said, you know what, Martha, you need to take a week off uh, before you come back because they realized what I was doing, which was just wonderful. So, so the kids had to wait a week later for, to start their art. But I was so appreciative. Mm -hmm.